Hey everyone, it's Jeannie and today I am sharing this floating floor pop-up card featuring a bunch of mama elephant items. The two stamp sets I'm using is Lion Dance and Lunar Sayings along with the dies, money envelope and fortune envelope. I have a red card base and an A2 card panel in blue cardstock that will be kind of the background for this card. It will be the sky. For my floating floor panel, I am using a piece of five and a half by eight and a half piece of paper. I am scoring at half an inch, an inch, and then four and a quarter. And I'll actually trim down this panel to four and three quarters. So again, I am using a card panel that is five and a half by four and three quarters. I score it at half an inch, an inch, and four and a quarter. I'll also have the dimensions down below in case you weren't able to catch that, but one side of the card panel is scored once, and then the other side has two score lines. So I've created this card before, and I know that I have had trouble trying to figure out how fast and how slow I need my videos to be as well as how much I want to edit out. This video will remove all the coloring because with the coloring it makes it a almost 20 minute video. If you guys like that and don't mind me including the coloring, please let me know in the comments because I really just don't know what you guys prefer. If you prefer the coloring, if you don't prefer the coloring, if you just want me to get to the instructions. I've kind of done a mix of both and I kind of get mixed responses to both. So it's really hard to kind of just pick without having any preferences mentioned to you. For the floating floor, Again, I will only have one score line on one side, which will go into the middle of the card, and then I will be creating this floating floor. So I'm going to show a side view of the floating floor so you have an idea of what it looks like, but I won't adhere it just yet because we have a few steps before we get to that point. You see the little floor, it kind of creates a rectangle, and when you fold it down, it will fold down flat. So for all my die cutting, I am using red and gold. I have this huge roll from scrapbook.com, which is double-sided adhesive. And so I'm adding it to the back of my cardstock that I'm going to be die cutting because these pieces are quite intricate and having double-sided adhesive already adhered to the back of the cardstock and then running it through your die machine kind of creates kind of a sticker. So you just peel it off and then you can add it to the card, which is what I did. For that blue cardstock, that will be the upright side of the inside of the card. And that's kind of my sky. I didn't want to do anything super elaborate or do any ink blending because this card has so many elements already. So I kind of kept it very simple. I'm placing that floating floor inside the card just so I can mark off where I want my images. And I have them face down because when the card is closed, you don't want the images sticking out because it won't fit into an A2 card. Of course, you can create your own custom envelopes if the card does end up being too big. But for me, I really like being able to put these cards into a standard envelope. So I'm marking off the four images that I will be popping up. Where those pencil marks are, I'm gonna be taking my X-Acto knife and a ruler and just kind of trimming out rectangular slots. The slots are for my pop-up mechanism. That sounds super fancy, but it's really just a strip of paper. So this card does not need any special dies. I think you just need a craft knife or an X-Acto knife to create these little slots and that's literally all you need. I have four images that I will be popping up and then I'll have some images directly glued onto the blue cardstock. So you'll see when it's put all together that it does look kind of crowded but also looks kind of empty as well because I don't have that many items popped up. For my pop-up mechanism, I am scoring at half an inch and then I'll be trimming them down to three eighth strips of paper. And it doesn't matter the length because you'll be trimming it down to the images anyway. And I scored it at half an inch because that's where the legs will be and that's where I'm adding adhesive. So where I scored it, I'm just adding adhesive onto the little legs. It's just easier to use double-sided adhesive. You definitely can use liquid glue if you want, but my preference for this particular card is double-sided adhesive. 
So I am adding double sided adhesive to the scored areas on the very edge. So there's one side with only one score line. So you'll be putting double sided adhesive on that. For the side with two score lines, you're only putting double sided adhesive on the outermost edge. For that side with the one score line, you'll be putting that into the middle of the card. So I'm placing it flat and once I do so, I'm gonna remove the release paper and close it down. So it closes onto the adhesive and then it'll stick to the card panel in the middle. That's the easiest way and the most accurate way that I can get it to work and I think it works really well. So once I remove that release paper I'm going to go ahead and close my card panel onto it and it will be adhered. So you'll see that it's adhered. For the second part I only have a double sided adhesive on the outermost score line. I did fold down onto the second score line. I'm removing the adhesive and then I'm going to close my card panel on it again and it creates that rectangular floor that you need for this pop-up. For the mechanism itself, I have a side view here and you can see that I'm just inserting the legs. I remove the release paper and I'm just putting it in at a 90 degree angle. So you want them to be standing straight up because that's how the images will stand straight up. And when you close this card, then those strips will move downward. Once I have all those pop-up mechanisms in the floating floor, I'm adhering my image and then I'm just trimming down that strip to size. So it doesn't really matter how long those strips are. You just need them to add your images to and once you have added it, you can trim it down. I have four images standing up and I've staggered them enough so you can see everything from every view, which I really like. And the girl and the boy kind of overlap each other, but you can see them. And that's what my goal was to be able to see all the things. It did look a little plain, so I wanted to decorate the background a little bit more. So I added these firework decorations directly onto that back card panel. I'm using liquid glue here because you don't need double-sided adhesive for it. I added an additional lion so he's kind of paying attention to the firework. I decided to add a sentiment and I used one of the Chinese characters that just says Happy New Year. I prepped the area with anti-static powder and I stamped the stamp with Versamark ink and we'll be adding Hero Arts gold embossing powder to the letters. Once I do that, I will flick off any excess and then heat set it. And I love heat embossing because it just looks so magical when it sets. So those characters just say Happy New Year. I thought the floor looked a little plain, so I die cut a few more of those decorative items and put them at the corner so it kind of matches the other corners on the blue card panel. And here I decided the background was a little bit plain, so I added an additional piece of decoration. For the card itself, because it's a pop-up card, it kind of wants to open on its own, so I'm creating this little belt to hold the card closed. So I just trimmed down a piece of one and a half inch strip glitter gold cardstock, and then I am wrapping it around the card and adding double-sided adhesive to it. I have a few decorative items from the I believe this is the fortune envelope. There's a square. So I cut that out in white cardstock and then I am using one of the Chinese characters. I believe this is fortune and I use the scrapbook.com. It double sided adhesive. I remove the release paper and then I'm just adding it to the square and this completes my card. So that little belt, you just slide it off and then you can open the card and these items will pop up and it looks really, really cool, but it folds down flat and you can put the belt back on. If you do celebrate, happy Lunar New Year. And if you don't, I hope you enjoyed the card anyway and I will see you guys next time for another video.